there. As a family tradition, he returned uh, to Edipro to be baptized and confirmed in the Edipro Methodist Church. This has been our family church. And being a young boy, I remember our grandmother who bring us here every Saturday. She lived to be 104 and two years. And she will bring us here to burn up the peas with water and soap and everything before church starts on Sunday. So I'm very familiar to this place. And I feel like home being before you. He was the eldest boy of the family and our father found it befitting as I told you to name him after himself. The senior friend as we now know our father was a driver and he had a fleet of trucks and a business he was also a businessman if you own those that were used for uh, they call it a certain uh, the northern region to bring things down here. In the late 1950s, his father Jenny, I mean, joined the company that constructed the main road from Commander uh, Akechi. I remember the name very well to Takrati, and he was employed as an assistant surveyor. He stayed with his appointment until the company reached Azim in the Zima area, where he adapted to so many things over there. By 1962, he met a prominent businessman and also the chief in the same town who recognized his intellect and promised to send him abroad to stay. He informed his father, this was something I was not privy to, but I knew about it ahead as I was growing up. He asked his father if he would help him get a passport. And this is what his father said. You are my elder son. Why will you leave me to travel overseas? Who will bury me in case I die? And I think it was the normal thing between parents around those days. This caused a rift between them and he refused to visit his parents for many years. By 1964, he met his first love and had his first child. And he is the firstborn character, character the Agnapo now a reverend also in 1968. He moved to Accra and joined some friends after that who were involved in what is called the football pool, a betting based on predicting the outcome of weekly, local and international football matches to make money. He was later introduced by a friend to a company called Article that manufactured beauty products and he was employed as a manager. In a short period, he owned a franchise of article at Aplau. I think, I don't have to explain that. This business grew, increased, and it became popular and financially blessed. Serving as my brother Danso was, he did not stop building his wealth. He ventured into used clothing business with a policeman called Pico as a partner. They resorted to the importation of containers of used clothing on quarterly basis to supply market traders in Ghana and Togo. The business also expanded as far as Nigeria to Nigeria with additional partners locally and in other West African nations. The company's counterparts in Europe formed an alliance called the Ghana Czechoslovakia Friendship Association, to which my brother Dansu was chosen as the general secretary by the Ghana, by the Ghana actually. He represented the association by traveling to many European countries and the United States of America to negotiate and transact clothing business to be shipped to West Africa. During these travels, I remember I was already overseas and he came with his young children. Uh, one is not here, Yahweh Isi, Nathaniel, Yahweh Isi, Karadok, they were the first two, so they went everywhere with the father. And by doing this, through the 
his travels, he felt he had achieved his aim. He was content with what he had done. So he settled in Ghana. And this was a man who could not give him anything to come and live overseas. He would have been there with all of us. But he chose to live in Ghana because he said his home. That's why today we have him before us. But we pray that when our time comes to, we will do the same. He became very rich and resourceful to his community, friends, and our entire family. As a brother, I saw what wealth at first hand and what it could do to some people. What do I mean by that? Uh, some said, just as the Bible states, money answers everything. It answers everything, but at some point, it cannot save life. And as you can see, you can have all the money, you can have all the wealth, but it doesn't save your life. So don't, Ecclesiastes 10, 19 says, don't wear yourself out. In, in, just to explain this thing to you, wealth disappears. It talks about it in the blink of an eye. Your wealth can disappear, for it will sprout wings, fly away like an eagle. As Proverbs tells us. So today we remember a brother, a father, a grandfather, a lovely man of intelligence and wisdom. His characteristics that manifested in the early part of his teenage years was what we read about him leaving a people to go to school at a while. So on the early Saturday morning of June 18, 2022, a day before Father's Day celebration, and we were, that is when the women treat the men very, very well. We were getting ready to receive them from our wives and daughters and sons in the United States when we heard that my brother had passed away. And it says here that Dansu took ill, and he was rushed to Coco Clinic at Kanishi Akra, where he succumbed to death. He passed at the age of 80. He spent his lifetime caring for others, guiding those in need of direction, uplifting those in need of support, and bringing hope to the people wherever he went. And I can see that when I came home today and I saw the crying, the weeping, young ones that were like babies all knew him as a friend because he helped them. My brother Fred Dansunyaku is survived by his siblings, Janet Nyaku, my sister, and myself, Edward Nyaku, Cecilia Moke, Rose Monsakodi. The sons are Reverend Karadok Nyaku, Nathaniel Aisi Nyaku, Kofi Daku Nyaku, Doris Gifty Forty. And it is Sikanyaku Grandchildren, nine grandchildren, and even more if we were to count them. Because I have a few that could have been added to this as well. So then we have the in laws, Mrs. Cynthia Nyaku, married to Carado, uh, Dr. Franklina Oye Nyaku, married to Ufida Aku, and Mr. Benjamin Annan Afo. Uh, that's the husband of uh, one of the daughters. Okay. Okay. Here lies a gentleman, an honorable man. Farewell, brother. Farewell, father. Farewell, grandpa. We smile and bid our last goodbyes as the angels congregate around you for a journey home. And I say, Brother Dasu, we thank you for all that you did and what you did for the family. May you rest in peace. Amen. 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 I'm so from, grateful to you for reading the biography of your brother. We got our soul and the family to meet him again at the 
second coming of our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We shall invite the eldest son to read the tributes. The eldest son to read the tributes of his siblings. Then the in law prepare after this you come. And the grand and the great blessings will follow. I 
asked me several times what it meant and he said that it was a song but I have to go and listen and to take advice and counsel from. Later in life, I understood the meaning of the song or oh, how I wish you were singing that song to me now, Daddy. I watch you shave every morning and drink your black coffee after. That was a normal routine every day. I also admire your Sunday routine, which was washing your clothes very early. I watch how you sorted the white colored and washed them and hung them to dry. I observe how you ironed them and you folded them away. That is how I also learned to iron so well. Just like you, I thank you for that also. You also clean and detail all your cars. Then you cook for us afterwards. That cooking, it's a memory that I will never forget. My dad was a very good cook. You know, very, very good I, had to, I wanted to say something, but I can't. But I think the best cook ever. As I watch you, I also learned to cook. I learned to wash clothes and be tidy like you. You made me to be domesticated. You have been a major influence in my life and in my development as a man today. You were fair. I remember how I poured out my heart to you about an offense you didn't know. But later you apologized to me and then started crying. Then again last year, you told my wife that you regretted what transpired in that particular incident. And you didn't believe me then. But when I told you the truth, it, it, was, it was a mark in my heart. But when my wife came back from Ghana last year visiting my dad, and he said, my dad apologized to her, I really forgave you. This morning, my wife of course, you should forgive so that you also will be forgiven. So that, I have forgiven you, and I hope you have also forgiven me of all my mistakes and my ways. You believed in education. You promised us a world tour. That is not your easy myself. That if we did well in school, you will take us abroad on the tour. And indeed, my dad honored that promise. I remember I was in class four, going to class five, and the OAC was in class three, going to class four. And on the long vacation, he took us to the American Embassy then for a visa. So the counselor said, why are you guys here? And then we gave him our report card. And he said, oh, you guys are brilliant. And then I said to that man, I, I don't remember his name, but I said, my dad promised us if I'm first, and my brother is first, he's taking us to a tour. And he did. You know. He took us to London, Germany, and the United States in August through October 1978. I was 10 years, and I'll never forget. In London, my late auntie, Mama Florence, was there with my late Sifio. Then we went to uh, the US in the Bronx. I remember very well, Aqueduct Avenue. My past uncle, Samonia, was there with my uncle here. And uh, it was nice. They took us to so many places. And we were all, you know, America is nice. I wish all of us one day can be there. But we came back to London, spent another week, and then he took us to Germany again. And I remember Hanover to see the late Mr. Moni, a very good man. That was my aunt, Mama Florence's husband. You know, my dad honored that promise. And I'll never forget it. I will never. I've always admired and loved you, Dad, but my relationship with Jesus Christ has caused me 
to love you more and understand you better. I will miss you. My mind will always still be on you and the deep talks and the late night talks that we had. This trip has been the most difficult trip of my life. When, when I landed at the airport, oh my God, help me. Not ever going to see you in your home. And then you giving me account of your day and the things that happened. But during our last conversation, which was I think eight days before you died, I was really, really surprised that you forgot my birthday for the first time in my life at the age of 54. Ever since I grew up, no matter where I would be, my dad even my children and my wife, he would always call us. But last day, my last birthday in May, my dad did not call me. He never called. So the week before he passed, I called and said, Dad, you forgot my birthday. I didn't know it was a sign that he was going to depart. It was a message to me. When you said you forgot, but you loved me a few days before you passed, little did I know that it would be the first and the last time of hearing that you loved me. You know, my father would say, Oh, we never said, we have never paid me all those words. But he never said, I love you. But on that last conversation, it was the first time in my life that my, son, my dad said it openly. His actions showed it, but he never said it. But on that day, he said it. He said, Yeah, I love you. And that was the last time. I can't say thank you now, Dad. Being a good father to us, for being there when we, when we needed you most, for loving and caring for us the best you know how. Thank you for being a friend and staying strong to the end. Thank you for your many lessons that have helped shape me and my siblings today, the countless corrections and testimony. I thank you for teaching me to be a caring and responsible man. Thank you for reaching or teaching me to be domesticated. I am proud to be of your legacy and also to be your first son. I'm glad you accepted the Lord as your savior. Thank you, Vincent, for doing that a few years ago. He will never allow me to, I'm a pastor, to preach to me. So my prayer was that somebody should talk to this man and make him to accept Christ. And on that day, Vincent, the will of God was done to him for this man being here. You will be missed. When I was ordained as a reverend, I couldn't tell you because you left us. May the angels in heaven give you a daily update until we meet again, Daddy. I will always love you. And I now understand that the meaning of the song on the name and on the papatias Fair you well. Simple that. Thank you.
come to America and come and stay with us. But unfortunately, we never got the chance to do so. We were the only person who called us by our model names, Afosia, Afuya, and Kwame. We always call without fail for each of our birthdays. Thank you for being so caring and loving towards us. We will forever be in our hearts. Although our parents are not our actual parents, we have a particular affinity with them. And I must think that when they pass away, even occasionally, our relationship with our grandparents will be closer than with our parents. It hurts so much to know that we wouldn't be able to see you again to our final home. You are a strong man fighting to the last day. We will forever miss you, Papa. We so rest in peace. Guide me over that great Jehovah. Name number 615, page 26. Great grandson, you see a man, you see a man. Me. 
in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.
na mimi pingo wenu yeye ni jamaa ono ni sasa kama no sasa ni eh ono ni si ya kwa ni kile na kana profu ni eketi wa ule o ono ni wa mimi le pingo wenu e wa sasa si ni ma ha ma ha ni kwa ya sasa kwa ono ni mimi pingo mimi ni mimi pingo wenu ni ma ha ni tutu ni kaka ya ya ni kwa ya sasa na tu ono ni wenu
Father God, we just want to thank you for what you have given us to give it back to you. We pray that, Lord, every hand that went through those coffers, you have blessed. Increase it, O oh Lord. Touch the hearts of your people that is continue as you give us back. We thank you for what we have been in there. Continue to bless this church with the leadership of uh, Reverend
stand here, Lord, and I pray for the family that you console hearts, console spirits, and fight that are